I think, you know, just, just to go back to what I used to read as a kid, I used to read a lot of, uh, a lot of kind of action type stuff, mysteries, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of stuff, bestsellers. Uh, there were these pretty uh, pot boiler type novels written mm -hmm. by, uh, the only person who people might still have heard of is probably Harold Robbins. Has anyone heard of him? No, because, so I mean, these are, these are uh, authors that, okay, they, they, they're very popular when they come out, but, but they don't have that lasting influence. Harold Robbins, though, was, did have a pretty amazing influence in India, because he used to always write about sex. And India is one of the places in the world that has been very repressed. You know, the Victorian era still continued for many decades and centuries after uh, after it was uh, gone in the West. So Harold Robbins would have these books that, you know, you could find all sorts of things happening there. And uh, I would, I would, we used to go to a circulating library where you would actually rent out a book uh, and, and keep it for a week. And there would be all these very uh, pious looking, you know, demure, sari clad women you know, gently putting their Harold Robbins books out there and getting all stack of them and putting them in their sari and going back <laughs> to read them at their leisure. And you always wondered, my God, what's going on uh, in those people's minds, you know, because the things in, this, in these books, I couldn't imagine them doing at home or, uh, you know, even. So, so it was always like, it was a real safety valve that mm -hmm. Harold Robbins and other authors like him they were completely freely available in India for the English-speaking public. Um, and they're still available. If you go to Bombay and you'll find them on the streets, they're still sold and you know, secondhand, so you'll find them on the streets being sold. So anyway, that's the, that's the way many people in India got their sex education, you know, through <laughs> Harold Robbins. So that was, that was great to have that. Um, so, and I think, I think all of those things, you know, all those pot potters and so on, I think they had, uh, a good influence in a way, in the sense that these people are not so good at character, they might not be great in language, but they can certainly churn out those plots. So, mm. and you know, when it comes down to it, I think plotting is the thing that's the hardest, at least for me, mm. and looking at some people who like to write literary fiction for them too. Uh, so I think at least it makes you start thinking about, okay, how do I move this forward? How do I keep the audience engrossed? Um, so that's, that's definitely one influence. In terms of influences that I can really pinpoint, um, someone else who comes to mind is R.K. Narayan, who used to, who is this Indian author who's no longer alive, but he wrote, uh, he wrote very simple works set in India, and I remember reading a lot of them. Uh, I read one book in particular called Gods, Demons, and Others, which he had taken uh, stories from Indian mythology and twisted them around and presented them in a somewhat different form. I read that in the seventh grade. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, that probably stuck in my mind because I've now written three books that sort of take bits of Indian mythology in them. So I think that was another influence probably. Yes. Uh, but, but in terms of you know, influences as to, I've heard people say, like Michael Cunningham for instance, he really points to Virginia Woolf. He read Virginia Woolf and said, okay, I want to be able to write like her. So I've never had that kind of experience.